You know, a lot is going on, and I have been encouraging conservative Republicans to get involved with politics. It's time to make a change. It's not enough to just complain, right? And we need to change our government. We need men in government who love what's right, who love the country, who love God, or love God first and then all that. And when you go into government after we vote for you, we need you to keep your word. I don't know what happens with most people. They go in and they, they change up. Nancy Pelosi. Now, you and I and everybody know Nancy needs to be out of there. It's time for a Republican to really get serious and run um, and run against her. Somebody got to start doing something, right? I have with me John Dennis, and John is running against Nancy Pelosi. Amazing! He's running against Nancy Pelosi for election to the U.S. House uh, uh, to represent California 12th Congressional District. And so I wanted to introduce John to you, and I want to get to know John a little better, and we got to support one another. Whether you agree or not, you got to talk to the people so you can understand where they're coming from. John, welcome to the show. I appreciate you taking a moment to come with us. Jesse, my, my pleasure. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, thank you, buddy. What, um, and so did you grow up in, in uh, San Francisco or Los Angeles? No, I grew up in Jersey City, New Jersey. Oh, I see. And how long have you, and where are you now, in San Francisco? Yeah, I live in San Francisco. I've lived here for about 30 years. I grew up uh, just, just, I want to remind you something really quickly. When you came to San Francisco last year, we met. I just sat at the head table uh, when you spoke here to the Republican women. Do you remember that? I remember that. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> talked about, and I just want to say that, I, you know, I've lived, um, geez, I've, I've lived overseas in five countries or four countries and uh, traveled to about 70 countries, did business. About and I really like having a full life, but I want to—I I knew you straightened me out when you said that you haven't really lived until you pick cotton. <laughs> so someday I hope to—I hope to have that Jesse Lee experience. And I also want to say you haven't really lived until you've been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. That's so amazing. Go. That's amazing. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> My pleasure. So, John, before I get into why you're running, I want to ask: you've been—you've been there for 30 years now. I used to yeah. I used to shock at the way human beings have it looked like a deliberate um, destruction by causing homelessness and bringing in illegals and protecting illegals over the citizens. Did you ever imagine that would happen in San Francisco? It's astonishing to me. We have so much wealth here. People do well. They live well. It's an amazing and a beautiful city. It is. And it's like and and to and for. I can take you down side streets, Jesse, where you think you're in Calcutta or Mumbai or something like this, or the favelas in Rio. It's astonishing. We did a cleanup about a little less than a month ago here in San Francisco, and we walked down an alley, and I had to put a mask on because the smell was so strong. Hypodermic needles strewn all over the street, people sleeping next to their own filth. More, We have more billionaires per capita uh, in San Francisco than any city in the world, and we'll have more homeless people sleeping on the street per capita than any city in America tonight. What I don't understand, and you're right about San Francisco, I remember when Oakland, I used to go to Oakland, Oakland, Oakland a lot when I moved to California, Los Angeles, and I remember when San Francisco and Oakland used to be a beautiful area. What I don't quite understand, the people that, not the government, but the people, whether you're liberal, conservative, straight, homosexual, whatever. Why do the, the, the working class people who are working hard to have a decent environment, why is there not an outcry from all of them trying to, I mean, not trying to, but forcing their representatives to do something that's good for the city and not destroy it? Well, I think what's happened, Jesse, is that the people here, who I think are largely fair-minded and who are just so generous and they want to be compassionate, they see government as a vehicle for compassion, the government as a vehicle for generosity. They just want the, you know, want the government to take care of it. And I think that's a tragic and fatal flaw. Uh, we need to take care of it. We need to, and if we're going to have, uh, you know, uh, our representatives 
uh, you know, take care of some of these issues, they also have to show a balance. You know, there's there's no balance in life, Jesse, without if there's not a, if there's not a carrot and a stick. And you you, you want to help people on the one hand, but on the other hand, you got to force them off the streets. You can't let them live that lifestyle because if not, they'll just end up. You know, you know, dying on the streets, langu you know, languishing and ultimately perishing on the streets. Well, why? So I think. No, finish that you know, point. No, I'm just going to say, I just think people are, you know, people are decent, and they and 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 they also feel like we've fallen into this trap where if you're enforcing the law, you're the bad guy. Oh. And that's a real mistake. I mean, to, when they're not the bad guy by enforcing the law. When I vote for someone to go, whether local, state, or um a federal government, when I vote for them to go and work for me, if they don't do the job that they promised to do, then I would vote them out. I would fire them. Why don't the Democrats fire the Democrats for the voters, fire the Democrats for not keeping their city safe and looking out for the American people? Well, you know, when I first moved here, <clears throat> San Francisco was still had a strong blue collar element. <clears throat> there was, <clears throat> excuse me, there was strong strong unions, and those are the kinds of Democrats that we had in town, a big portion of them. And those people wouldn't put up with this sort of thing. But as San Francisco's gotten more expensive, we have found that a lot of these kids who move in and then the people who they elect come out of the indoctrination uh, centers that we typically call colleges and universities. And what they're doing is, uh, you know, they 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 put up with this because they feel like that that they can use uh, San Francisco as sort of a social science experiment. They're trying to impress their professors that they can actually get this done without doing any kind of law enforcement. And uh, so as a result, they just keep you know they're banging their heads against the wall. But I, I will say that in in recent, uh, really since the beginning of the year, it seems like even Mayor London Breed is starting to realize that you can't keep just throwing money at the problem. You have to start helping people move along in life. Uh, Nancy Pelosi has won every general election by over 80 percent. Um, do you think that Californians will have a change this time around? Uh, do you think that there's something happening where people wake up and realize Nancy is not good for them anymore? Uh, well, I, well, let me just say this. Nancy Pelosi has largely ignored the district. You know, while she's out there chasing Russia hoaxes and impeachments, uh, sham impeachments, we have this problem where people are, you know, sleeping on the streets and we've got car break-ins and, you know, streets are a disaster and all sorts of property crime and terrible things happening. For the first time since I've been active in politics, actually probably in her history, I saw Nancy Pelosi campaigning just yesterday, and she's finally starting to feel the pressure. She's concerned because not only is she being challenged by somebody like me, but she's also being challenged from the left, from the progressives, who don't think she's left enough. <laughs> so she's feeling so she's feeling the pressure right now. It's the first time in 30 years, I think, and uh, we're just going to keep applying it because we're in the right and she's in the wrong. Why should the uh, voters um, trust you and support your campaign? Tell them why, John, that they should trust you and vote for you. Well, look, I mean, Jesse, I grew up, you know, people look at me, they think, uh, you know, I was born with a silver spoon. I grew up in a public housing project in Jersey City. And I'm not talking about just a, you know, kind of a so-so experiment. I'm talking about a place that eventually got, got so bad, they had to tear down these buildings, these 13-story buildings. There were seven of them. Only five of them remain today. And so I started from there. My dad was a longshoreman. My mother worked in City Hall. I put myself through college. I started a business that became very successful. It's one of the top 10 design firms in the world. At least I was a partner in that business early on. Uh, I've had success in, in, in real estate and in technology. And so, you know, I've gone from the, you know, from the projects to Pacific Heights in San Francisco, built businesses along the way, been active in government, run organizations, sit on boards. I understand what the issues are in the district. I understand how to coordinate and cooperate with people and organizations. And I also know how to fight back and push against people when they're not moving things along. I think if San Franciscans, you know, if San Francisco gave me the opportunity, I think they'd, they'd be astonished with the with the return on their investment. So I think I'm really the right guy for the for the 12th congressional district here in California. So what are the uh, just a few of your main issues, the main issues for your campaign? Well, I think it's I think it's a form of intergenerational child abuse to continue to spend money the way Washington is. I mean, we're the federal government's twenty three trillion dollars in debt. 
going on 24 really fast, but that doesn't even talk about the unfunded liabilities. 10 years ago, we talked about those unfunded liabilities. Those are still sitting out there. Those are issues where that are that are really, they want to talk about the existential threat a lot in politics. That's an existential threat to the republic. So we've got to get that under control. I also am not a big fan of these foreign wars. They just go on and on and on, and they devastate families all over this country. We've got to end these wars. They were set up the wrong way. We didn't declare war, for example, in Afghanistan. It was the wrong way to go, and as a result, we're still in it for 20 years. People don't understand how devastating that is to the to the to the psyche of the country to continue to do those things. I want to get a federal government under control spending wise. We've got to start, you know, go after a two penny plan and then and get spending under control and start reducing the uh, the, the deficit and then the debt. And then lastly, I'd say, I mean, we, we have a federal government that is completely out of control, well beyond its mandate, as described in the Constitution. Uh, we've got to get pri privacy and civil liberties back to the American people. These are all critical issues. And if we do that, Families can live their lives the way they want to, as opposed to the government coming in yeah. and dictating what they what they should do. I think that's going to have enormous dividends for quality of life in San, in, uh, San Francisco and in the United States. And what about the um, uh, illegals, sanctuary, sanctuary state, the illegal condition in California? What will you do about that? Well, one of the things that I've talked about, Jesse, is that you know San Francisco received last year half a billion dollars, $500 million from the federal government. Every single one of those dollars had to be requested by Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi requested them, rubber stamped them, and then voted to approve every single one of those budgets. That's not happening with John Dennis. Listen, it's part of my obligation as a congressman to submit those requests. I am going to judiciously and submit them, and I won't submit them unless we're succeeding. And I'm not going to submit a request if we continue to pursue the sanctuary city policy. It's a disaster. I can't speak to the state level in my position. I'll fight it in any way I can. But this, the, San Francisco is wrong on the law and they're wrong on the facts. We should not be a sanctuary city. Amazing. I want to play a quick clip. I know we run out of time. I want to play a quick clip of you standing up to uh, an alleged Antifa member. And this has gone viral. Uh, I want to play that for you. Do we have that ready? Yeah. Okay. Why are you so angry? I don't understand. I'm just here chatting with you. Why are you angry, man? Because here's the thing. You probably disagree with me, but I disagree with you. No, I actually want you there. But why? Because you're people. Why? Because you're racist. How do you know? You don't know one thing about me. I grew up in a public house. I grew up in a public housing project. I grew up in a public housing project. So you did. Wherever you grew up, you should go back there. Because we don't want you to I don't need that. I've got that experience under my belt. I'm doing other things now. And including helping people get better. We don't want you here in SA. I've lived here for 30 years. I'm not so sure how long you've lived here. Well, I'm here 30 years. I'm a, no, I'm the guy. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I got my family. So you go. You can't, you can't keep moving like, four people out. I'm going to catch you when all the cameras are around, and I'm going to f*** you up. Oh, you're tired. No, I am. No, you've got the wrong guy. No, no. You've got no, the very I wrong guy. Exactly. I'm going to catch Amazing. First of all, it was really nice to see a white male standing up to these thugs, these, these just evil people, Antifa, and not backing down. But he threatened you. Whatever happened with that situation? Filed a, rep a report with the police, the San Francisco Police Department are, are, are completing, I think, their, uh, their investigation. I'm expecting some news any day now. Uh, the San Francisco Police Department has been wonderful. I, I think I understand where this is going to go. It's going to be up to the San Francisco District Attorney, Chesa Bowden, who, uh, who is, you know, the Soros-backed, uh, you know, light on crime, uh, soft on crime, a new district attorney, to make the decision as to which way this proceeds. Um, when, if someone should ask, if someone should say, you got the wrong guy, is that a code for I have a gun? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's a code. No, listen, I, I, you, I told you where I grew up and I'm not, you know, that's not the first time I've confronted and been face to face with a guy <laughs> like that. So. Well, I'm glad you stood up to him, man. I really yeah, am. No. Well, here's the thing. I mean, the progressives just keep throwing anger. And I know anger is a big issue for you, you know, Jesse Lee. I mean, think about everything that uh, that, that emanates, what you think of when you think of why somebody is so anger, angry like that. And that's why I said, why are you so angry? Yeah. Like I might have been channeling Jesse Lee Peterson at that moment <laughs> uh, because— because, I mean, who knows what his relationships are like with his, with his parents and what's going on there. But 
that activity, what he was doing, Jesse, was out of control. You know, there were suburban moms who came in to help with a cleanup, and this guy's grabbing his crotch and yelling vulgarities, instructing them what to do. You know, he's picking out all the guys in the audience, the big guys, and trying to intimidate them. He was completely out of control. And this anger's got to get under control. And the progressives, by the way, they traffic in this sort of thing. They don't care how they gain power. They care. They'll use any means necessary, including physically intimidating you. And I just—I'm sorry—I just couldn't abide that. I, I had to—I had to, you know, walk up to him and try and defuse that situation. Are you going to get rid of the, all these homeless people on the streets in California? Like, put them away or something, and do something? What happened? Go to. Hold on a minute, yep. John. Yep. Okay. Oh, no, I can hear you now. Go ahead. The homeless oh, okay. situation, you're going to help clean up all that, right? Yeah, of course. We've got to end homelessness. It's it's uh, it's not necessary. Uh, our politicians have failed us. Nancy Pelosi has failed us. And, uh, you know, we while Nancy Pelosi is, is chasing Donald Trump with impeachment and Russia hoaxes, 16,000 people are going to sleep on the streets tonight in San Francisco. She doesn't deserve the job, and we can do better in San Francisco. Uh, is there a way to end um, California as a sanctuary state? Is there a way to stop that in that? Yeah, I think we have to do that by by uh, ballot measure, by uh, proposition. There's a process to do that. It's really a function of finding the money. I think uh, I think uh, Californians don't want that across the board. And it's um, it's really listen, I, I, when the federal government steps over the line, I'm good I, I'm good with nullifying the law, but this isn't one of them. It's pretty clear. Constitution says the federal government has authority over immigration and naturalization. Yeah. The state is simply in the wrong. If it doesn't get litigated and resolved in the courts, then we need to do it by ballot proposition. So John Dennis, tell the folks how to get involved, how to contact you, whatever information you need to give out. Well, we're johndennis.com, johndennis.com. That's where you can sign up to volunteer. By the way, in the home stretch, need lots of volunteers. You can make phone calls. We'll get you to go in straight away. If you're in the area, we're going to be out walking precincts all week, knocking on doors, making sure people know that they have an alternative to the following. John Dennis, we've got, had an explosive following on Twitter and uh, especially helped by the fact that Donald Trump retweeted that, that, that viral video clip that you just showed. Amazing. And so John Dennis dot what? John Dennis dot com. John Dennis, D E N N I S. John Dennis That's dot right, com. Sir. Thank you, John, for coming on, man. I wish you well. It's my pleasure. It's always good to see you, Jesse. All the best. You too, John. Thank you. Thank Amazing. You, John Dennis dot com. Check it out, folks. We got to change the government, really. The Democrats don't like us. They don't like the country. They don't like God. All right. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show for us. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.